part of this video is the Starlink system. As you can see here, that already came in and it's already set up. So this is kind of a satellite video, I guess you could say, um, as well of everything else we've had going on as far as um, setup, camping. Unfortunately, I lost some of the pictures from the trip, the Arizona trip. Anyhow, the Starlink system is pretty simple to set up. Um, it comes with a, I believe it's a 75 foot cable that plugs in the bottom right here. And then the power cable that goes right here. I was a little leery about leaving it in the bay here, but this is a heated bay and it, we're getting strong signal all over the uh, RV, no problem. Picks it up strong and uh, it's working great. So, it, how I hooked it up, I'll bring it along here. The cable's running underneath the tires, which isn't great. I tried to figure out how to zip tie it up and that was not necessarily the easiest. There's nowhere really to zip tie it under there. But it comes out here and as you can see it's going right up to the top of the um, ladder and then I have it zip tied to that portion there right there um, and zip tied on the other side as well and it's facing a northern exposure and getting the hitting the satellites from there and guys I tell you that is one of the easiest setups I've done compared especially compared to the direct TV which was um, took about easily twice as long easily as long guys so uh, as you can see we are back out at our uh, kind of our fall campsite uh, hopefully you can see that better uh, I didn't want to see that face <laughs> uh, camping out here and we just came from a two week trip through Arizona down to Tombstone and back and I'm seeing I'm going to see if I can dig up some of those pictures but most setups were very similar to this uh, although we didn't have dogs on that trip um, but with the Blackstone Griddle, uh, we do have three of the four dogs here with us this time. Um, we usually, most campsites always give you a, a picnic table to kind of move around. We always like to put, um, some type of plastic tablecloth on it, as you see there. Even though sometimes we don't use it, it's just more decorative than anything. And we always throw down those gray... We only have one down right now with those gray mats to kind of help keep the sand from going inside so much. Um, it's been a little chilly today. It was raining earlier, so we do have our chairs up, but normally those are out. And we'll sit in here and sit out here at night. Um, these actually have fire pits, which is kind of nice. Um, but yeah, it's been a good trip. And some of the iterations you go through on this is you know setting up you know I, I first and foremost I recommend setting up your entire um, outside camp area excuse the hand including um, satellite dishes carpet you know outdoor form uh, mats for the ground your dog area basically everything you possibly can the first day when you get there and it's not always easy because a lot of times you're tired you don't really um, feel like it but you'll feel better in the long run because you'll be utilizing the things you bought to go RVing to go camping in the first place you know versus two or three down the two or three days down the road maybe maybe you decide to set up the, the satellite at that point and you're on a five-day trip it's almost not worth it 
So I find this try and set up everything from day one um, and utilize it as much as possible. And I think it really, that fact alone reduces the stress because then you can relax later. You don't have to worry so much about, um, oh, should I go set up the other part of my camp or should I go set up the dog area or should I go, you know, it's already done. You can relax, you can enjoy your outside time um, you know at night we've been watching tv with the, the starlink's been great honestly guys we don't do streaming but we do movies um, work that type of thing we're not gamers we're not live streamers so it's the rv version has been great so far again very easy setup you see where it's up on the roof um, plug and play on literally plug and play on the uh, router um, it finds the stinky and then you set up your own SSID super simple probably the easiest I've been in IT for over 20 years and that's the easiest I've ever seen or done 30 years now geez so um, you know these are some of the things you go through um, on our trip there was very expensive gas stops. That's the part I wanted to mention. Um, and part of the problem was, and this was my fault, we had a full tank of water when we were heading down southern Arizona. And we burned more fuel than we need be. So check your water tanks. Don't haul around a bunch of water. It's fine to fill later for maybe you want to keep it for emergency purposes. But don't, don't haul with it. That's a big fuel burner, you know. Um, you know, keep keeping it a uh, reasonable speed. Like I say, I'd try not to go over 65. Um, if you even went slower, you'd probably burn less fuel, honestly. I still see RVs flying by me. Um, okay, so that's enough rant on that. The other part is, everybody knows on these videos... I always like to include multiple things. I don't try and talk about just maybe the satellite dish or whatever it may be. I lump it all in when I got something to say. Um, so I had the mobile uh, RC come out and take care of that recall on the Grand Design lines. There's, I think reflection, momentum, solitude all have them on the refrigerator lines that need shoring up in case they're too close to heat line. Something like that in behind the refrigerator. So my mobile person, matter of fact, he just left, took care of that. Um, have him coming back for several other items tomorrow while we're here. So take advantage of, especially if you're in the area, if you can camp local, that's what we've done here for a while to uh, take care of some of these things, especially the recall. We knew how important it was. It did take a while, uh, but find a good mobile person if you don't like taking it in the shop. The shops are hard, and I think they maybe hasn't, haven't changed where there's still a long wait period if you take your RV in. So you may pay more for a mobile person, um, but hopefully you can get a lot of it under your warranty, that type of thing. Um, so this spot here we're actually using a poop tote a good old poop tote um, and it's worked out great I found out that we use about 36 gallons of waste water a day roughly uh, for two adults uh, my wife and I interesting but I know I have to I have to empty it every day and it's I don't mind it gives me something to do gets me out and about and uh some fresh air other than maybe some poop smell <laughs> but um and then we're leaving the day after next so i can skip one day i know the rv tanks will hold you know x amount of gray and black get us to that last day so you can time things you can work it out you can kind of figure it out um but these are some of the iterations you go through when you're camping when you're out traveling, um, I used the Gas Buddy card pretty much exclusively on that last trip. Saved a few bucks. Um, I try and 
when we unhook and maybe we'd go to town for dinner instead of cooking in or cooking on the Blackstone, I'd try and get fuel then without being hitched up. And other RVs or RVers have talked about that too. It's really the best way to go. Um, try and fuel without your, you know, maybe you have a travel trailer, your fifth wheel or whatever you're towing uh, without, without that. Just take your truck and your tow vehicle and uh, fill up that way. It's way easier getting in and out of the gas stations. Um, you know, you got to remember these RVs are pretty tall too. You got to check those canopies. Uh, I tell, you know, I tell my wife all the time, make sure we we look up when we're out there on the road because, you know, this height, no one's really used to it unless maybe you're a truck driver and used to that height all the time. But these things, you know how it is if you don't use them, especially for five six months or more you're not used to for one towing them much less all the little things you got to do uh, that's why i really recommend having a checklist when you're first setting things up um, especially it will help you stay on track not forget things even setting up your outside area you know maybe there's a certain way you have it uh, for sure setting up the satellite dish because uh, well, this was kind of a new setup for me, but now that I do have it documented, hopefully I'll remember next time. Um, and believe it or not, I did organize underneath uh, in the cargo bay here. Um, RC was just telling me, the mobile repair guy, that they make a slide out. And I think I've seen some channels demo this already for the entire... Uh, storage bay that you can slide out and it's not terribly expensive so and fairly easy to put in according to him so I might look at something like that where you can just slide slide it all out use it reorganize it and slide it right back in I'll try and put a picture here on the video um, other than that guys that's pretty much it I know I had a few other things I wanted to talk about on the road with you guys I'm not quite remembering now maybe I'll put it in the first comment stuff I think of um, but yeah please leave a comment below what's your what's your travel iterations you go through when you're you know checking out where to stay checking out once you get there how you set things up you know what what are the some of the things you go through maybe we can learn from each other um, when we're out there camping and uh, RV everybody have a great day talk to you soon How's everyone doing? This video is about many different things, but I'm going to start off with the DirecTV satellite um, that uh, set up. We did have the old, um, well, I say old, but it was like a uh, mobile unit, uh, the King, before that it actually broke on us. Uh, older technology anyways on the older satellites so found this on Amazon of all things um, that actually is HD 4k um, and will do actually believe it or not um, two you can watch one record one channel type thing it's all in the swim system the SWM uh, I learned the bulk of it, this online, just checking around. Um, so, anyhow, this needs to be level here. Um, the tripod. And you can level it right here. It comes with a compass and a leveler. Um, these new dishes are a lot easier. The elevation is this little red mark. As long as it's on whatever the dish may tell you or the satellite setup may tell you plug in your zip code and it works off that um, I punch it down with some stakes um, I don't think it really comes with any when I think about it so you might want to have those add those extra to your setup so it runs all the way over here underneath Excuse the mess. Excuse the mess. I'm still dealing with this, but I still wanted to make this video. It's fresh in my mind. 
how to do this. So this is the same black cord we saw coming out of the satellite dish. And what you want to do on these, and this setup anyways, this, this gray looking box here um, actually came with my old mobile unit, or my old King unit. Um, but it's called a power inserter. And you can find these separately on Amazon too. I think they're, as of 2022, November, they're about 17, 18 bucks. Um, like I say, this one came from our old King unit and it works. So you take the satellite line, and I don't know if you can see that, it says two antenna here, okay? And so it inserts power to the antennas. You can see here, there's another cable line and there's power, so it's feeding the swim system. It needs power on these, because they're doing so much, I guess. The swim system needs power. Um, but then it feeds in, you can see here, to this swim uh, splitter. And it goes in, that cable goes in the inside, the top, from this, your power inserter, to here, okay? And then these two feed off to your direct TV, uh, HR24s or receivers or whatever you may have, okay? These two outlines. Believe it or not, that took a while to figure out. Um, actually had it hooked up wrong first at some point. It our last trip that somehow worked, but this is the correct setup. Um, I need to clean up these cords, but anyhow, that's how it goes. Again, from satellite dish to into the inserter, comes out of the inserter into the inside of the multi-switch, and then the two uh, receivers are off of there. Make sure these two plugs are in, they're terminators. The other part of this, guys, um, you want to, as you see, I have this TV set up out here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, and I'll start off with both receivers hooked up here. Um, they're inside now, obviously, but I'll start off and have this TV on where it actually is um, searching for satellite going through the satellite it's searching for satellite screen and I'll try and put a screenshot here on the inserted here on the video and it will produce a large beep a loud beep turn the TV all the way up and I can hear it it's close enough I'm like 10 15 feet from the satellite hopefully it's coming out with all this wind okay and I can hear it when you move the satellite dish around trying to get it on the satellite and it'll eventually start to beep in louder and louder and or more rapidly and that's when you're at the 95 uh, you want to be 95 or higher signal strength and beyond that um, I'll put another screenshot the exact settings the swim um, dish size swim 3 I believe it is I'll, again I'll put it on the screenshot and yours may be different depending on your setup, but you'll have to have that all set properly too. Um, so that's, that's that video.